Brian, uh, you are back. I am excited. I, uh, I'm excited to be back. We've but been, we got a lot to dive into. We've been spending a lot of time together. And uh, the last episode we we did was one of the most popular episodes on on, uh, on the season. So definitely this is a topic that is that is resonating. Well, they like us? Yeah, yeah. And by the way, whoever you are who's downloading this stuff on Apple and Spotify, shoot us, Brian and I, on LinkedIn or an email or what have you. We'd love to hear from you because the good people Absolutely. at Apple do not, they do not tell us who you are. But appreciate you listening. Yeah. So, or they might not like us at all, and that's why they're listening. That's true. There may be... <laughs> There's a there's a there's a hate watching and hate listening <laughs> that's a new thing. So if it's that's that, well then save your emails. Uh do not wanna do not wanna hear from you if you're hate watching us. But seriously, thanks for the support. Now, in case you uh have not listened to the prior two episodes around this topic, let me kind of do a recap and Brian I'd love your help here. We sure. started this conversation talking about the call center, contact center, employee, agent, whatever, rep experience. Yeah. And I started by saying the job sucks. Yep. It sucked when I did it in the 90s, and it still sucks today. And two things happened along the journey that I genuinely learned. One was that I learned that. Lots of people, including yours truly, have been trying to help the situation. And we were doing that based on faulty logic. The logic was, this job sucks. It's like you go to a steak uh, restaurant yeah. that serves steak, and they just give you A1 sauce on the table. That's usually a red flag. We, you do not need to taste the meat, sir. You want to <laughs> taste the sauce. And we decided, you know what? We're not going to fix the job. We're going to give you pizza parties. We're going to do activities to yep. help soothe this painful job. And, and you have been teasing now for two episodes that there is a better way that works. And that way involves solving the actual grind, as you call it, of the job itself. But I'd love you to elaborate on, on kind of a summary of how we've yeah. gotten here, and, and then we can move forward. Yeah, and I'll do my... Uh... Uh, Kornheiser, uh imitation of okay, you know, pardon the interruption. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to go to some some information and data, and and I did this as a summary for somebody, as a as a logic as kind of you do in geometry of if this this and that yeah. all that. So so I'll go through and read this quickly, and um, you know, you can I'll give it to you. You can always you know utilize it, make it uh, available, a link yeah. or something. So, number one is company profitability is driven by customer behavior. And customer behavior is driven by emotion. So, people are not rational, they're more emotional. Right. Ultimately, it's a good thing. Then, when you take a look at, well, what drives the emotional? satisfaction and behavior of customers. It's not AI, it's not all the the you know self-service. It is humans. Hmm. Because that is how you have this emotional connection is with another human. So human agents are what drive human behavior. So then if you go to what drives the behavior of agents is meaningful work. And we hmm. talked about that in the other episodes. So, and that is when my work is meaningful because what I do in my work is make a difference in somebody else's life. So, helping customers is meaningful. Now, here's where we come into the, the challenge. So, there's something destroying meaningful work, and that's what we call grind. And the number one source of grind, so grind is driven by how we manage agents. Huh. That is the number one problem. So you can then go full circle. So how we manage agents is destroying our profitability. Okay. You heard it here first. 
Uh, contact center managers, leaders, you are the problem. Uh, <laughs> those are coming from Brian's mouth, not but there is a solution. emails to him. But <laughs> this brings us to which the report that uh, you know I published a couple of months ago, um, crisis in contact center management is we're now at a low in the customer experience and in the employee experience. But one of the things we didn't talk about is the result of that, because when people aren't changing the industry and they're going a different direction rather than humanizing the industry. Um, and unfortunately, it's leading to this thing that uh, we call, well, I, I guess I was asked on a J.D. Power um, podcast, well, after the great resignation, uh, what's next? Because if people are leaving because they don't like the way they're managed, what's next? Hmm. And I said, the great termination of leaders. Because hmm. if they can't be successful, and, you know, I just said that on a whim, and, and now we see it. I talk to people all of the time who are no longer at their companies, or they were one day and they're they're gone. So there is this whole level of mid-management and it is getting to the executive level also because we can't continue down this path. So that's all the bad news. <laughs> so the good news is you can make a difference. You hmm. can turn this around. Hmm. Okay. That is hopeful. Now let's get into... Uh, uh, maybe you are setting me up here. It sounds to me like the obvious answer is fire the entire management team, bring a new one in, and nope. Okay, still wrong. Nope. <laughs> Go nope. <ahead. laughs> That's why this is is good news. And as I had uh, a person I know who has been in the industry a long time, and I sent him the report, and he's like, "Oh, you know, this is going to be so painful to read," and he's like. But actually, it was good news. And and so that is, you know, overall, that is what, um, you know, what I am talking about, because there is a way. And so you brought up, you know, even in the first episode, this idea of we have this manufacturing mentality. Yes. Therefore, we're trying to manufacture interactions and so it's, we're going to do A, B, C, D. And the problem is the human. Yeah. So how can we can control the human and we don't have these defects from the human ruining this process? So that mindset, which we call the manufacturing mindset, or, hey, we deliver a service, A, B, C, check the box, we can measure it you can shift to we're serving a person. So we talked about that in the last episode a little bit. So this mindset shift of, wait, ABC, the process, say this, do this, doesn't actually work for humans. So how do you unleash the human so that they can actually have a great conversation and that human to human conversation with a customer so you get the win, win, win. Customer so, loves it, employee loves it, company has high profitability from it. Now, uh, this is why you're here live. I don't mean to put words in your mouth, but this sounds like anarchy. Uh, this sounds <laughs> yeah, that's like. That's what you said last time. <laughs> well, like, I grew up in the world, I've been, I've been around where this carefully curated, you do the intro. <laughs> You build report. These are all instructions, right? They may not yeah. be a script word for word. Then here's where you solve their problem. You recap. You say goodbye. <laughs> and uh, maybe you bribe them to take a survey. This has been the script <laughs> that's been going on for a while. And yours are saying it sounds like, hey, guys, let's just vibes. Let's just get on the phone and just, and just uh, is this... It's, is this what you're saying? It's not chaos. Okay. So, um, so in in a sense, through this research and the different things we were trying to do, we created what we call the meaningful work or a meaningful work methodology. Okay. And so now this gets into the the how. So we said, hey, these ideas of grinded meaningful work, 
we want to be able to measure those because we know, hey, people trust the data. So when we created this uh, survey, employee survey, and it also goes to the you know frontline manager slash supervisor, what you get is these two dimensions of grind and meaningful work. And we plot people based upon their level of grind and meaningful work. So when we do that, we also have the size of the dot, the intent to quit. Huh. And what we found, which was quite honestly pretty shocking, those two measures of, of grind and meaningful work, they influence somebody's intent to quit more than any other factor you can think of combined. So all other factors combined don't come close to the two factors of grind and meaningful work. Also, what's interesting is uh, intent to quit and intent to engage are negatively correlated. If I want to quit, I don't want to engage. If I will, you know, don't want to quit, I have a tendency I actually want to engage. Well, and then, you know, this was before all of this stuff about quiet quitting. People would say, we don't have, we don't have many, you know, that high of turnover. You know, that's extraordinary to have that much high turnover. And it's like, no, but you have probably a lot of quiet quitting people and, and, and you're having them talk to your customers. So, <laughs> what, you know, name your poison. What do you want? So why that's important is because when we talk to people, it's, oh, we already have a great, great employee experience. Oh, we already have, you know, high engagement. Oh, we do engagement surveys, all these other things. And it's like, until you focus on, remember, it's the job, not the compensation or the company. It's the job itself. That's what we're measuring. That's the big lever that drives um, people to stay, engage, and be high performers. So I'll stop there because that was a lot of meaty yeah, stuff. Yeah, no, I'm I'm tracking with you. So I want to go a little bit into the how a bit more and say, if conceptually we've lived in a very regimented world where we wanted to assembly line the customer you know, the contact center agent experience. And you're sort of going, yeah, that's where all the grind is. Um, I've started using this, this term you use um, where you think you're having <laughs> this relationship with two people, but there's a third person in the room. Yep. Uh, I think that visual is very, very powerful. And so I, I want to kind of go to the, I am now bought into this. You know, yep. and I know you work with all kinds of companies and organizations in the world, so we're not going to solve it on a in a few minute podcast. But conceptually, can you tell me what my world used to look like? I think most people listening to this are familiar with that. Regimented, we measure everything and we track and we control that human conversation must go this way. When you leave and they're bought into this and they do this. Describe that contact center to me. Okay. What that contact center is, is where somebody comes to, an agent comes to work, and the first thing that is on their mind is, I'm pretty stoked, I'm good at my job, I'm, I'm ready to help customers, and my management isn't walking in the door saying, don't make a mistake. Hey, you know what? You had all of these problems or you had a bad score yesterday and everything else. Because they're traditionally walking into this environment that's punitive and negative. The major switch is how they're managed. So it's the, rather than truly the supervisor managing them, it's developing them. How can I help you today? Anything you're struggling with, whatever it is, hey, and it's true recognition of, you know, did you have some good calls yesterday? Yeah, I did. And it's it. it like, great. Go, go knock it out today. You're doing a great job. That's genuine. It's authentic. Not 
some pep speech that, you know, they, uh, they, they were given and it's, Hey, here's what to tell your agents. So when people feel like then they can be themselves a little bit, so they have a little bit of leeway, it's not, you know, you know, wide open because it's high stress when you're talking to a customer. Hmm. If you can't help them, you personally, you personally feel, you know, that you have let down a human and they needed you. It's really painful when you continue to fail at that. So agents are supported in whatever, you know, I can go ask my my coworkers for help. I can go ask my uh, supervisor, the red hat or who's ever on the floor, because I actually want to continue to get better. They're self-motivated. They will huh. go above and beyond so that they're not in those stressful situations. And when they start to realize, oh, you know what? I can connect better with customers because I'm not so focused on a process or a script. I can actually listen and then respond. And guess what? We're human and we know how to do that naturally. Ah. We're, we have been stuck in this. We have accepted this weird conversation. Customers too, but so have agents. Hey, I can't really talk to you. Uh, I really, uh, give me your information. Uh, I got to do this and that. And then the customer's like, yeah, okay. And I know you can't tell me what's really going on or whatever else. And we'll just play this game. Until we can maybe somehow dance to a solution. That's just weird. When you start to have true engagement, and it is this feeling of, hey, I am crossing the company line. I am working with this human that I can have a level of rapport with. It's not, hey, I want to ask, you know, how is the weather? And, and that's rapport. That's not true rapport. <laughs> what it is, is when the customer responds and opens, it's like, great, I can respond in a human way. And I'm going to come over to your side of the fence, help you be the agent, you know, the advocate back to my company. And we're going to solve this. And it's the human to human relationship, not this stented thing. And all of a sudden, when agents feel that customers feel that, and the management feels it, and it's especially the management, it has a life of its own. Like, great. And, you know, I'll let you respond because I'll, I'll, I'll give you a case study and an actual example of how we did this. Well, let's, let's go there because um, in, the, in the remaining few minutes we have, and we may have to have two parts of this again, here are my reactions and questions I have for you. Yep. What I love most about what you said was that your radical idea, as it turns out, is to let humans be humans. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, yes. Great summary. <laughs> like, it's to, like, 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 go where the flow is going. Allow these humans who like to serve, kind of get out of their way be helpful, not be a cop or like, just, ah, what did you do? And just kind of, I'm way oversimplifying. Yeah. And I see how it's that, that is, easy. I see how that is super attractive to, I, I know there are people who are on the phones or in contacts and they're hearing this and hallelujah. And I also believe you that even managers, I've, I've done that job. I've been a super uh, contacts and a supervisor manager are like, Yes. I now want you, maybe in your case study, you will address this. The other two players in this deal, the end customer, are they like, do they call you and just hang up on you? Like, what the hell is this? I thought I called the 1-800 number because their head wants to explode. And like someone's talking to me like a human. And to the rest of the organization. So not the contacts and a manager, but yeah. The rest of the org. All uh, right. So I'll, I'll start with the latter, wait, the yeah. rest of the organization. So we figured out this is a change methodology. Mm -hmm. Change is not always easy for organizations. And that's what we might have to talk about next time. <laughs> 
But that is why you have the data. These are your people. Here is their, you know, in their state, mental state in a sense of how they view their job and whether they're energized or they're disillusioned or frustrated or uninspired. People, we put people in those four categories. And we, what we do is, and this came later, but we now do this. We start with the leaders. So the senior leadership and we do the readout and it's what we call a meaningful work visioning session, about eight hours. And we go through and say, these are the principles of grinding meaningful work. Here is the readout of your own people. Now, what kind of vision do you want? And it doesn't have to be crazy. It doesn't have to be dramatic. And it's like, ah, you know what? Yes, I want it to be more human. And then we give them the executive version of the eight-hour training course. So it's not eight hours for them called Developing Others. So this is really important because everybody thinks of you got to manage others. You got to manage them. You got to manage them. If you have the shift to, I have to develop them. Huh. I have to develop them so that they're self-managing, self-learning, self-correcting. And they can be successful. You know, I have to be there for them. But it's not telling them to do everything. It's getting them and developing them to where you can do this it's encouragement, but then it's, Hey, it is a coach. And actually it's even more than what we call a coach. Cause things have even shifted more. You almost have to be, you know, within HR realm, you almost have to be a life coach because you have to get to know the person individually, know their challenges, have that rapport, the human to human relationship. And then you're going to be better at, coaching them, understanding what really works for them. It's a one-to-one -one management approach. And so in this Developing Others course, that then is for management and supervisors, they go through, understand, you know, all the, the principles and, and they get part of the readout and everything else. But we also have this whole thing called uh, the five talents. Hence, we're called fifth talent because the fifth talent being the most important. Um, and that is the ability to use your own unique talent while serving others is going to lead to not only you delivering great service, but you're going to have great meaningful work. We named the company that before we had all this data, anything we've measured against meaningful work, nothing has been higher than the fifth talent, the ability to use your own unique talent. So as you see is, this cookie cutter approach doesn't necessarily work because people are different. So if you can shift to I'm managing to I'm shifting to developing people who are going to do great things. That's what this whole eight hour course does. So I'll stop there because there's one more I, course. I can, I can. I can I can talk about this with you forever. Like I, there's so many places I'm making notes. I want to I want to delve deeper into because I think you you drop these throwaway lines, um, like the fact that the most impactful part of your customer loyalty and your uh, in your service experience is the when they're talking to a human being. I think that's that whole thing, Brian, has been lost in this whole conversation around that's AI and automate everything. But in yep. the interest of time, um, can you talk a little bit and uh, as, we, as we kind of wrap about, I now get the impact on the humans, the service agents to manage and, and the rest of the org. Can we sober up and I go, what resistance? So if I'm listening to this and I said, I'm in Brian, I'm gonna call you up. And by the way, guys, reach out to us, not through Apple, directly to us. Brian, I want to do this then. What should I be in for in terms of resistance and, <laughs> and challenges? Um, immense. So 
uh, I'll finish my story and then yeah, sh- please give you the 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 end, which is kind of where you were just going. Yeah. So, um, and then we have a course where the agents or the employees right. will learn the five talents also, and it's called serving others. And so, hey, this whole idea of focusing on the human and then actually how they have the joy of serving. So we did this um, for an example, uh, 5,000 agents for a client across five of their outsourcers. We didn't change any processes, didn't change technology, didn't change the metrics. This is the process we did. And it was even through a train the trainer process. And so each outsourcer kind of delivered it, you know, to certain levels, you know, effectiveness. But the range was a month over month uh, reduction in turnover. And it was 25 to 50%, which is dramatic. And then they had um, ultimately performance improve. And the CSAT went from an increase of 10 to 25%. And then collectively, they reached the highest CSAT scores they have ever done. This is all we did. We just dealt with the leadership, this change in mindset, and they were on fire. And, you know, it, it kind of unleashes it. So with that kind of dramatic impact, um, unfortunately, then COVID hit. And a new executive came in and like, not doing any of that. Because <laughs> as we say, um, a new leader is, is typically an extinction level event for a culture. Right. And also, um, then it's like, well, these outsourcers saw this dramatic difference in improvement. And if just one of them did it on their own and worked with us they would have gotten all all this business because they would have easily been, you know, way above everybody else. So how many of you think of the outsourcers adopted this approach? Zero. Wow. So it's this idea of executives, very, very difficult to change. Yeah. Yeah. And also, uh, as we say, if, the contact center, uh, well, grind for the agent, the number one cause is the supervisor. We say for the contact center leader, the number one source of grind is the executive. Yeah. Because they have this different view. They don't want to change. It's, and we can get into that next time. But this whole idea of change is the most difficult part but I, we found a solution to that also. Yeah. Um, and you know, we're, we're running out of time. So I think we should, we should have a conversation about executing this, but I'd love you to leave us in a place of when I was, I was taking notes on some of the stats you were, you're rendering there, like this thing works. I feel like, I hope that we look back and you are Dr. Schopenheimer. Hopefully you don't you don't go crazy <laughs> in an insane asylum. Who was just simply like, <laughs> yeah, hey guys, hope. the answer to this is doctors, just wash your hands and we can prevent <laughs> all these deaths. And people are like, we went to fucking medical school, excuse my French. This is your idea? <laughs> <laughs> and and then eventually, like, oh, yeah, that's right. We should just wash our hands. I think we're going to get to a place, hopefully in you and I's lifetime, where we just go, hey, remember how we would just have these humans whose job is to talk to other humans? And instead of getting out of their way, we decided we're going to assembly line the whole thing and we're going to script the whole thing. And we made yeah. it illegal for there to ever be any genuine human. Brian. A conversation with a human who happens to be a customer and a customer service rep, where a basic human emotion of, I'm not feeling well today, or I have the sniffles, 
if you've ever heard that in a recording, it's the fakest show of empathy you've ever heard in your life. That same person is the most, one of the most em empathetic persons you've ever met. I've done this in a white jack and I go, what was that? And what's going on in their, her head was the clock. <laughs> she was scared that if she yep. began to ask what happened, yep. blah, 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 that God forbid this conversation. She said to me, and I did the white jack, she said she, she was a talker. So I was worried if I asked her, she was going to tell me a 10 minute story about how she got that cold. She was not wrong. This call, this customer was a talker. And we've created a world where two human beings cannot be human anymore. And the beauty, ladies and gentlemen, is Brian's been to the future. And if you do this, it actually ends up in great outcomes for all. Yeah. And, if you can get to the other side. And, and very quickly, you know, during the delivery of this, we had the client with the five outsourcers and they're like, how is it going? And even we were shocked at the reaction across all five. They're like, it's changing lives. So I was like, wow. and the client's like, I don't, what's that? I don't, I don't know how to quantify that. It's like, you'll see, you'll eventually see this. Uh, we had one of the uh, site directors, you know, basically in tears saying it's changed my life. Wow. And wow. it's because of this, wait, I love my people. And it's, it's the management who has yeah. the tears. I love my people. Now I realize I'm the number one cause of grind and their misery. But now I see a different way where I can actually help, help them hmm. love their job. And it's an emotional reaction. Why? Because we're humans with emotion. And this is unfortunately, this is not an evolution of customer service or, you know, contact center management. It's a revolution. We wow. have to stop doing so many things. And that is why it is a revolution. But I'm telling you, it is so much easier than, than people would guess. Why? Because we naturally go to we being human. It's easy. This, this is, <laughs> we're working hard to do this unnatural thing. All right. I'm out of time. You've got to come back because there's a lot more ground to cover here. But Absolutely. Uh, this, this alone has been groundbreaking. Um, I'm going to put, uh, for those of you who want that sheet that Brian was uh, was was uh, uh, reading to us here, I'll put that in the show notes for folks to to download and 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 get. And please reach out to Brian. Um, he's one of my. There are very few people I have on who are saying something that's original and that impactful. <laughs> and and this one happens to be simple. Um, Simple uh, ex execution and change, of course, um, is going to be difficult, and we'll get into that in the next call. But Brian, thank you so much for this and uh, the two other sessions you've done hey, with thank me and you. the audience. Thank you. This is awesome. Thanks, Brian. Take care. You've been listening to an Amos Talks production.